So, you know me for virtual reality, but actually a lot of people don't realise I collect toy guns. Bit of a weird one. Uh, typically antique ones. Uh, so I'm going to step through a few of them tonight and uh, show you basically my collection. The ones I know a lot about and a few I don't know very much about at all. And maybe if you're a toy collector, you might know more than me and you can fill in a few gaps. That would be great. Anyway, on with the show. Okay, so first up we have this one by BCM. This isn't in too bad a condition. It's a space outlaw gun from roughly the 1960s and it was made in the UK. I have another one over here and it's in slightly better condition, this one mounted in the opposite direction. I really like this one. This is uh, by a company called Futuristic Products made in the USA in basically the mid 1950s is my estimate. I'm not 100% sure. And it's called the Strato Gun. It has a fantastically retro futuristic shape. I really do appreciate the, the aesthetics of this one. I won't show you all of these, but I've got about four in total, possibly five Buck Rogers Rocket Pistol XZ31s from 1934, made by Daisy in the USA. And that's what it looks like on the flip side. It's a lovely thing. Buck Rogers written on the side. Great. A really iconic design is that of the Hubley Atomic Disintegrator, and this is from the early 1950s, and this is one of the one of the most iconic guns you can buy. I think I've got three of these. I've got one mounted next to it, uh, showing the much better side. Look at that design. That's so fabulously 1950s, and look look at all that detail with the dial. It's absolutely brilliant. Sorry about the reflection of the glass. Can't do much about that. This was such a high quality and heavily weighted item. They actually used it in a science fiction film in the uh, 19, late 50s, I think it was, called Teenagers from Outer Space. And they used these, uh, these guns, all the aliens, the alien teenagers had atomic dis disintegrators. Next up, we have another Buck Rogers gun, the Buck Rogers Atomic Pistol, gold. And this one is the U235. Uh, and this is made by Daisy in the USA, and the eagle-eyed among you, and again, apologies for the reflection, will recognise this gun from the album cover of the first Foo Fighters album. There you go. Mid-40s, this gun. They came in sort of various colours, bronze through to gold. This is a gold one. I've also got a replica of this upstairs, which I will, will show you, a more modern replica, which is actually probably more collectible than the originals. This is a lovely British gun from the 1950s. Um, by Crescent Toys in the UK called an atomic jet gun. And it was basically a, uh, a water pistol made of metal. Obviously pretty rare because most of these just kind of fell apart through rust and just damage. Problem with all of these toys really, they just eventually got completely demolished by the children that owned them. Don't know much about this one, other than the fact it's a, a very typical tin lithograph print um, Japanese space gun, most likely from the 50s or 60s. Japan very famous for creating these tin toys around that period, really because I think, I believe they were limited from, from any kind of serious production and really were, you know, because of the, the war, um, what they call them, uh, reparations, I'm not sure what the term is, uh, but they were basically forced into industries where, you know, they couldn't do much harm and toy making was one of them. This is quite a favourite of mine and it's, um, again, they're all rare, but this one's, this one's quite rare. And again, apologies for the reflection. This is a Daisy Rocket Dart Pistol by, uh, I believe this is, uh, yeah, mid-1950s. It's a wonderfully colourful one. And this would fire darts out of the front. Sadly, I'd have none of the darts. Finding darts for this pistol was almost impossible. They all got lost. Um, but yeah, it's a very nice example of that. Probably one of the best ones actually in existence. I've never seen one better than the one I've got. Now, this is an interesting one. This is a paper popper. So you'd have a reel of paper which went in at the top and it would feed through the gun and then you'd pull back this, uh, this, this, this trigger and it would punch a hole through the paper making a loud bang. This one's made by the Langson Manufacturing Company in the USA in around 1936. Got a pretty firm date on that and it was called the Pneumatic Paper Popper. Now next to it I have a similar designed paper popping toy but I don't know anything about this one at all. It's a very different design to the other one. Um, it might be by the same manufacturing company, but it's so rare I couldn't find a single thing about it. 
Now last up, and a little bit of fun in this cabinet at least, is uh, <laughs> Rocket USA's Zap Brannigan Atomic Ray Gun. This was made in the year 2000, and they're quite collectible. They're not exactly rare, but um, they're a bit of fun, obviously sort of harking back to the days. So I've, um, I've included that in there because it sits quite nicely in with the rest of them in this cabinet. Now I mentioned earlier I had the uh, lovely kind of Atomic Disintegrator by Daisy. This is actually a replica that was released about 15 years ago in very limited number. This is uh, of a thousand made. This is number 849 and actually probably more collectible than the original which is a bit unusual. As we scan down here I've got a pearl water pistol, another Japanese litho atomic uh, gun there. And um, this one's quite rare indeed. This is a Stingray uh, gun, which is a UK uh, um, Joey Anderson uh, toy uh, from the, you know, the chap who made Thunderbird. And down here we have a space gun, another litho. And this is indeed, look, it's Buck Rogers himself, which was a, uh, a giveaway that came with this collectible one here. Now, I'm just gonna draw attention in this little cabinet to a couple of odd ones. This one, no idea what it is. Very old indeed. Obviously made for children, maybe as many as, well, who knows how old this, it might be a couple of hundred years old. Um, you, you draw back the trigger there and it hits a, uh, a metal panel which makes a loud pinging noise. And it's got a piece of wood at the front. I think that is very old and I have no clue where that's from. Next up here, this is another very interesting one. This is um, a G-Man automatic, which you wound up, pressed the trigger, and it made lots of clicking noises. Now, the interesting thing about this was G-Man, as a brand, was, of course, promoting and really kind of idolising and romanticising the FBI. And that was an initiative by J. Edgar Hoover himself, who was trying to draw people's attention away from idolising criminals which is what was happening at that period of time in America. And he was so infuriated that these criminals would have uh, these people following them and, and idolising them, a little bit like, I guess, modern-day gangster rappers, um, that he created the image of the G-Man in the form of comic books and, and, indeed, toys to really kind of raise the profile of the FBI. And there you are. There's a little cartoon G-Men on the side of that gun. Isn't that fantastic? I love that. And I believe that's a Marx toy, if I'm not mistaken. Can't remember exactly, but I believe it is. Very famous manufacturer. Now this cabinet has a few oddities in here. I'm not really sure. This space gun rifle, I don't know a lot about that, other than the fact it's a, a typical kind of Japanese litho. Uh, this one's quite an interesting one. It says British made on the side, and it's basically got a, a torchlight in the front, which is... Uh, that's quite unusual. I don't know anything about this one at all. Nothing at all, could be anything. We've got this one, I, I just, I, I do like this little water pistol because it says gee whiz on the side. It's clearly from the 1960s or 70s made in the USA. Um, and this one, a sallow gun, and this is a water pistol, a, a metal water pistol made in Germany. This one here is a Chinese, probably not very valuable, but quite an interesting one, lion sparkling pistol. And here we have another one of the uh, the, the Daisy uh, guns, which I have uh, quite a few of these. In fact, here's another one, <laughs> just lying around on the carpet over here. Really fantastic. There you go. Great little toy, that. Now, here's an interesting one. This is a, uh, a New Age, uh, made in the USA, smoke ring gun. Now, what you do is, and, and I don't want to break it because it's very old, I don't really want to force this, but basically you pull that down, this flips open, you put a burning rag, oily rag, inside it, you slam it shut again, and you click this, and it would hit the diaphragm at the back, and shoot a smoke ring out of the front, an actual burning, oily rag smoke ring. And that was a children's toy, can you believe that? Now, I don't know much about this gun, but what, what appeals to me is a couple of things. First of all, the fact it says Empire Made on the side. The Empire being, of course, the British Empire. Empire Made might be might mean it's made in India, perhaps, or perhaps China, Hong Kong. Hard to say, and it's difficult to date, this one. I would guess 60s or 70s, 
but the term empire seems to suggest it might be a lot older. One of the best things about this is when you turn this, the cogs spin round and it makes the most appalling noise. Oh God, that's awful. It's really loud. Now, similar to the last gun is this one. It has the same sort of cog layout, which is quite interesting. No markings on it to suggest where it's made. I would suspect it's probably Chinese. Does it make the same horrible noise? It has this kind of probing red thing at the end, which gyrates in and out, which is a bit weird. Uh, but there you go, quite an, quite an interesting one. Kind of tin, I guess, it's quite light. But uh, no idea about that one. Now, I, I don't know how rare these ones are, really. These are um, basically souvenirs that were sold at Ringling Brothers and Barn and Bailey Circus. And, and it's difficult to tell if these are, are rare or collectible. I've never really seen many of them, uh, which to me suggests they are pretty rare. I, I've never seen another one for sale, let's say. Um, and it used to have uh, a bit of flint inside it and it would shoot sparks out the front. I imagine you can probably change the flint but I haven't tried, but there you go. It's, um, I guess, 70s. I'm not actually sure how old that is. If people know, let me know. Now, I do like this one. This is made by a company called Merit. Uh, it, it's uh, an English toy gun, I think in the 1960s. And you see it's called a, uh, a Space Pilot Supersonic Gun. And uh, it says on the side, it has a high frequency resonator and it's for the Interplanet Space Fleet. Now you're probably wondering what that actually all means. It means it makes this noise. And a lovely flash at the end. And basically has a torch. Now here's an interesting one. This is by Marx. I believe 1940s, maybe even earlier, maybe 1930s perhaps. Um, I think it's Bakelite, maybe not. It's hard to tell, it's an early plastic. Uh, and basically this is very much of the same period in time as the, the G-Man gun, I would guess. Uh, again, don't know a huge amount about it other than it's a Marx toy, but I imagine this would be a gangster toy, uh, which the G-Man toys were trying to sort of rail against a little bit. Uh, you turn the handle and it makes a sort of rattling noise, like a, uh, like a Tommy gun. Don't know much about this one, just a plastic gun. Don't think it's particularly special, just quite like the look of it. Now I'm grouping these together for one very obvious reason. Well, maybe it's not obvious. It's obvious to me anyway. And that is, these are children's toys made to accompany a film that definitely wasn't suitable for children. Ages four and up? Seriously, if you're letting a four-year-old watch Mars Attack, there's something very wrong with you. I mean, the batteries are long flat on this. It's never been taken out of the box, but when you used to press that, it used to light up and the brain used to pulsate, which looked really, really cool. And next to it here, we have, again, adult film, Star Trek. The very first, uh, I think this was the um, the J.J. Abrams reboot, um, and this was one of the guns from it. Sealed, obviously. Wouldn't want to open it. Uh, and this, I think, is probably the rarest one of this collection, at least, and that is a Dune gun. The film Dune was not really for kids, let's be honest. <laughs> Now this is a pretty rare thing. I have never seen another one like it. Certainly not boxed. Um, and the idea that any parent would have taken their kid to see Dune, sort of beggars belief. Again, ages four and up, parenting, Jesus. Now and you could say, well, of course, it's made for collectors like me, but actually not even really collectors bought this stuff. Dune was a bit of a bust of a, of a movie, but look, they had a whole bunch of other characters and figures and toys in the background. Uh, uh, sold alongside this and collect them all. And it's by a toy manufacturer. Yeah, no wonder it didn't sell. Now, I'm pretty sure you can still buy these, not in the shops, but you could probably find one on eBay. And this is a really fantastic example of something that is going to be very collectible in the future, mark my words. This is a Doctor Who gun, which combi combines all of the technologies from Daleks and Stone Angels and Cybermen and it does all the fantastic special effects and it lights up and it's really, really good. And my kid wanted one, so I bought one for him to open and play with and I bought one for me and I hid it in the cupboard and here it is. Now this is a real cracker. This is a Rick and Morty portal gun. It's the most recent addition to my collection. I've dimmed the lights a bit so you can see the fantastic effect. 
How cool is that? Isn't that amazing? Sound effects. Everything glows. What's not, to, what's not to like about that? It's brilliant. Now I really missed out on the opportunity to buy a full size one of these, but here's a tiny replica of Hellboy's gun. You can open it and you can take the bullets out and it's just, I, I don't know, absolutely fantastic that. I wish I had the full size. Wow. Look at this one. This is so cool. Then this is from Portal Tool 2. Unfortunately, I never got hold of the Portal 1 version of this. But this is the Portal 2 version. And um, with a switchable light from orange to yellow. And it's just a really nicely designed thing. Iconic valve design, you know, with sound effects. Brilliant, huh? I love it. So cool. And next to it I have the Half-Life gravity gun. Look at this one. And this is genuinely massive. Look at the size of it. I can barely hold it with one hand. Really cool looking thing. It's got the sound effects. Just really nicely made. The detail on it is absolutely fantastic indeed. collect toy after toy after toy you name it I collect it I've probably got it somewhere um, I even collect uh, movie props and, and movie memorabilia I'll just quickly show you a couple so this one was from one of the Superman movies was it Superman 3 quest for peace or was that Superman 4 quest for peace anyway this is one of the newspapers they printed and it apparently is screen used uh, I purchased it from the local film studio just down the road from me where the Superman films and indeed Star Wars films were shot. This is one of my favourites. This is from Superman 2 where you have uh, the wonderful Terence Stamp there who played General Zod and this is mounted on a, uh, a local newspaper. I believe it's like a, the Woking Herald or something uh, and this is screen used. This was on the desk uh, in the Daily Planet. Uh, and actually it's in the movie and I have some provenance behind it as well. There you go, White House surrenders. Hmm, interesting. Now you notice actually, it's quite interesting. What's very interesting about actually, if you read the news here, it's actually obviously just been cut and paste from like a New York Times at the time. And in here somewhere, buried, you have to sort of find it. A little bit in here about how the uh, the US were backing, in, backing uh, President Mugabe. Um, that worked out well, America. You could say this is my centerpiece. The Han Solo blaster from episode four, A New Hope. And here it is, the master replica. This is probably, I would say, one of the most sought after Star Wars collectibles in existence. It absolutely is. And um, fantastic. And to, to handle the reflection problem I've got here, I'm gonna take it out of the case. Now you'll forgive me for not wanting to handle this. Um, the grease from hands is quite acidic and it can actually leave marks and blemishes on the item. It's absolutely fantastically well made, this, uh, this, this prop replica from Master Replica. It was based off the original. They actually got uh, an original prop, dismantled it and completely rebuilt it, um, building a limited run of 1500 and this is around about the thousand mark and extremely heavy I can hardly hold it what's interesting about this um, this very very nicely made replica is it cocks and fires sadly not lasers but it's got a really healthy clunk to it wiping off the acidy grease as I go you wonder why I'm so sensitive about this. Well, Google how much these cost. I mean, they cost a bloody fortune now. I was quite lucky. I bought it about 15 years ago and I didn't pay too much, but now they are very, very sought after by um, collectors. And I would guess, I would be shocked if they haven't used this exact one 
in the upcoming Solo movie. I'd be shocked if they even bothered to recreate it. Um, why bother when you've got this available to you? Even all of the battle damage from the movie is lovingly placed. You've got kind of the blaster marks and scratches and scuffs. That's all kind of added uh, in the factory. And that is definitely my kind of centerpiece item. It weighs a ton. In fact, I'm going to show you how heavy this is. Okay, so this is in grams. Apologies, Americans. You'll have to Google it. So that's coming out at 1.5 kilograms. 1.5 kilograms. Okay, Google. What's 1.5 kilograms in pounds? 1.5 kilograms equals 3.307 pounds. 3.3 pounds. So basically weighs about the same as a gun. Now, if you're a Star Wars obsessive like me, it, uh, it's quite a common fact, I guess, that the DL-44 Han Solo blaster uh, is actually based off the C-96 Mauser, which is a first and second World War German um, semi-automatic pistol, I believe. Um, so the base gun, before you bolted on this scope, all this paraphernalia on the side, and this doohickey on the front, the base gun itself was a Mauser. Obviously this is a replica, but when they were making the Star Wars movies, they just used what they had at hand and bolted some sci-fi stuff on it. And that thing they had was an antique Second or First World War Mauser pistol. So there you go, you made it through my entire collection. I know I've got probably about another half a box of these guns lying around somewhere, but those are the best of them. Uh, and finishing on the classic DL-44, I don't think I'm going to top that, to be honest, am I? Although I do like the Half-Life guns. So, um, thanks very much for watching, and as your reward, uh, I'm going to announce a, a little contest detail for a little collectible I've got. So this I 3D printed on my FlashForge Finder. I'll include the link to the, uh, the model in the description below. And if you have a 3D printer, you can download and print it too. But this one has been painted by my good self. So I've, I've painted this. He's only small, he's very delicate, but he will look very good sat on someone's shelf somewhere in the world. So if you'd like to enter a contest to win this little baby, should I call it a, no, I won't call it its name. You know what it is, but you know, I don't want Warner Brothers on me or whatever. Uh, but <laughs> contest dot ukrifter.com head to contest dot ukrifter.com um i'm not doing this for any commercial financial gain but if you'd like to enter the contest you can win this and i will post it free anywhere in the world to the lucky winner there you go